Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about the mean value theorem um, and operating on it with tables or using it on a table. Um, and we're gonna be reasoning about the second derivative of a function. So let's see what we need to know to be able to do that. So there's three things, really four, but I forgot to write one of them down. So the first thing is uh, you need to know the mean value theorem. And the mean value theorem, uh, if you're at the point where you're doing this problem, you better know the mean value theorem, but it says, if f of x is continuous on the closed interval from a, b, and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a for some c, where c is on the open interval from a to b. Um, so it's saying the slope of the tangent line will equal the slope of the secant line somewhere on the interval. Okay, so the big requirements that are continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, we have to keep that in mind as we do the problem. The second thing is, we need to know that differentiability implies continuity um, because you are frequently just told that a function is differentiable and you have to say that therefore it's continuous and then you can use the mean value theorem. Uh, that's kind of the idea there. A third thing that we need to know for this specific type of problem is um, we need to know what twice differentiable means which will come up in a lot of problem statements. You'll just be told that f of x is a twice differentiable function and now do a bunch of stuff. So what twice differentiable means, so differentiable means that f of x is differentiable. So twice differentiable, f of x is differentiable, but the twice part means that f prime is also differentiable. So it's not actually telling you anything about f double prime. Um, well, I mean, it kind of is, but indirectly, but it's really telling you f of x is differentiable, f prime is differentiable. Um, and then the fourth thing we need that I forgot to write down is we'll need to use the intermediate value theorem, um, which uh, when we use it, you'll see it in action. Hopefully you already know it because it's important. Uh, so let's see what the problem says. So we have f of x is twice differentiable, so there it is, uh, with values in the table. So I constructed this table. We've got x values of 1, 3, 7, and 10. So they're not even intervals, so make sure you keep that in mind. And then uh, y values are negative 5, 7, negative 1, and 8. Um, and what we want to do is prove that f double prime of x equals 0 for some x on the interval from 1 to 10. Um, so let's think about a plan for this, and then we'll actually try to execute the plan. So our plan. First thing I'm going to do, um, so I want to reason about f double prime, but to do that I really need to know things about f prime, so I'm first just going to use the mean value theorem on f of x to find three values of f prime of x. So I'm going to look between 1 and 3, mean value theorem on that interval, and then 3 to 7, and then 7 to 10. That'll give me three values um, that I know for f prime. So if I'm going to do that, then I'm going to need f of x to meet the conditions of the mean value theorem, which I can see from the problem that it does, um, but when I'm writing it up, I need to remember that. So what that kind of looks like is I'll end up with uh, three points that I know on f prime. So that's the x-axis there, and those are the three points that I know on f prime. Um, and I'm going to call those points, as I do it, c1, c2, and c3. So I'll use mean value theorem, um, and I'll say that uh, mean value theorem applies on 1 to 3. We'll find c1 there, and so on. You'll see when we actually do it. That's the first part of my plan. The second part of my plan is I'm going to use the intermediate value theorem. So I will use the intermediate value theorem on f prime to show that f prime of x is equal to 0 twice. So to do that, I need f prime to be continuous because that's a requirement for the mean value theorem, uh, for the intermediate value theorem rather. Um, so I'm going to have to come up with a way of saying that f prime must be continuous. The problem, the twice differentiability, tells us that that will be the case. So then I'm thinking I will have a graph maybe that looks like this. It doesn't actually matter what the graph looks like, but these points right here are where f prime must be equal to zero. So I'm going to call those d1 and d2. And then what I will do is I will use the mean value theorem on f prime of x using the two points d1 and d2 uh, to show that f double prime of x must equal zero. To do that, I need f prime to meet the conditions of the mean value theorem. All right, so now we're gonna do that. So this is our plan, this is the problem statement. So if you wanna try it on your own, maybe like pause here, see if you can implement it and then kind of compare, or you can just keep following along. Here we go, this is a lot of writing, but it's not like, there's not a lot of math uh, calculations, just a lot of math thinking. So here's our problem. First thing, I wanna do uh, part one. So I'm doing the mean value theorem three times. So to do that, I need to say that I'm allowed to do it. 
So f of x is differentiable and therefore continuous. Um, and so I'm gonna say the mean value theorem applies. Now I'm gonna use the mean value theorem. So I'm just gonna say by the mean value theorem and we'll dive in. So the first one is gonna be f prime of c1 is equal to, so I'm going from one to three. So slope of the secant line, f of three minus f of one over three minus one, which is equal to, this is just calculations. So seven minus negative five divided by two, which is six. And then I wanna say that's for some c1 on the open interval from one to three, right? So that's what the mean value theorem tells us. I'm gonna repeat that process twice. So f prime of c2 is gonna be equal to the slope of the secant line from three to seven. So f of seven minus f of three over seven minus three, which is negative one minus seven over four, uh, which is negative two. And then that's gonna be for some c2 between three and seven. And we'll do it one more time. And f prime of c3 is gonna be the slope of the secant from seven to 10. So that'll be f of 10 minus f of seven over 10 minus seven, which works out to nine divided by three, which is three. And that is for some c3 between seven and 10. So now I've got the three points that are on the derivative so uh, I'm gonna move on to the next part of my plan, which was to use the intermediate value theorem on f prime. Um, to do that, I need f prime to be continuous. So I need to construct an argument that f prime is continuous. So I'm gonna do that by saying, since f of x is twice differentiable, I know that f prime is differentiable and therefore continuous. So I'm just using the given information, but I'm making sure that the person reading my answer knows that I understand what things mean. That's why there's, there's kind of like a lot of things in here that like maybe you could get away without saying. Not worth risking it though, in my opinion. So we have f prime is continuous. So for the intermediate value theorem, that's the only requirement is that the function be continuous. So f prime is continuous, I can use the intermediate value theorem. And I know that f prime of c2 is less than zero, which is less than f prime of c1. So by the intermediate value theorem, f prime of, I'm gonna call it d1, is equal to zero for some d1 between c1 and c2. So if, you, if you're if you a little confused about the c1, c2 interval thing, um, look at the value of f prime of c2 up above. It's definitely negative two. The value of f prime of c1 is definitely six, but c1 is from the interval one to three, whereas c2 is from the interval from three to seven. So c1 is definitely less than c2. c1 and c2 are x values, f prime of c2 and f prime of c1 are like y values. Um, so this is what we have set up so far. I'm gonna do it again. Um, so f prime of c2 is less than zero, is less than, less, blah, less than f prime of c3, that should say. Um, so that should say c3 there. Maybe I will change that or attempt to change that or just write over it, let's see, um, c3. Okay, and then we want to say, uh, therefore by IVT, F prime of D2 is what I'm calling it this time, is equal to zero for some D2 in between C2 and C3. Okay, so now I've shown that F prime is equal to zero in two places, when X is equal to D1 and when X is equal to D2. So now I'm gonna move on to part three of my plan, which is to again use the mean value theorem except I'm gonna apply it to f prime to say something about f double prime. All right, and to kind of like keep this explanation together, I'm gonna to copy everything I have onto the next page. So we have this, I gotta change this two into a three again, just to be consistent. That should be a three. All right, so we're doing it. So we know that f prime of d1 is zero, f prime of d2 is zero, we wanna use the mean value theorem. To do that, we need f prime to be uh, continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open. The original problem said that f of x is twice differentiable. So, since f prime is differentiable, which we already kinda of dealt with uh, like two, three lines up, and therefore continuous, mean value theorem applies to it. So we can apply the mean value theorem to f prime to tell us something about f double prime. So let's do that. f double prime of x is definitely gonna be equal to f prime of d2 minus f prime of d1 over d2 minus d1. 
But since f prime of d2 and f prime of d1 are the same, I mean, they're both zero, but they just really needed to be the same. Since they're the same, that secant line has a slope of zero. So that equals zero, and then that's gonna be for some x in the interval from d1 to d2, and the reason for that is the mean value theorem that we're applying. All right, so we're basically done, but I'm gonna finish writing the answer. So I'm gonna say, um, I think you could just be done here and, and people would be okay with it. Uh, but I think we should go a little further because D1, D2 isn't really what the question was. Um, or maybe it was to just show that F prime, F, let me go back. No, we wanted to prove that it happens on the interval from one to 10. So let's make it explicit that the interval from D1 to D2 is a subset of the interval from one to 10, which I'm actually literally just gonna write. So I'm gonna say, since D1, D2 is a subset of the interval from one to 10, we know that F double prime of X is equal to zero for some X between one and 10. And we accomplished our goal. And uh, I think it went pretty well, except for that little subscript of a two that I had to change for a three. Other than that, uh, this is pretty much a perfect answer. It's what I would definitely be looking for. Uh, the advantage of knowing how to do this is that this is the argument that you make like when you're faced with this problem. So you don't have to like come up with the mathematics, you just have to work your way through the mathematics. So I think it's helpful to see somebody run through it once or twice. Um, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.